The constant expression outputs a single float value. It is one of the most commonly used expressions and can be connected to any input, regardless of the number of channels the input expects. For instance, if you connect a constant to an input expecting a 3 vector, the constant value will be used for all three elements. When supplying a single number, it can be useful to collapse the node using the small triangle icon in the description area. R specifies the float value the expression outputs. You can quickly create a constant node by holding the one key and left mouse click in the graph area of the material editor. Nest is constant 2 vector. The constant 2 vector expression outputs a 2 channel vector value, in other words, 2 constant numbers. R specifies the float value of the red, first, channel of the vector the expression outputs. G specifies the float value of the green, second, channel of the vector the expression outputs. The constant 2 vector is useful for modifying texture coordinates, as they are 2 channel values as well. You can quickly create a constant 2 vector node by holding the 2 key and left mouse click in the graph area of the material editor. Third is constant 3 vector. The constant 3 vector expression outputs a 3 channel vector value, in other words, 3 constants numbers. An RGB color can be thought of as a constant 3 vector, where each channel is assigned to a color, red, green, blue. R specifies the float value of the red, first, channel of the vector the expression outputs. G specifies the float value of the green, second, channel of the vector the expression outputs. B specifies the float value of the blue, third, channel of the vector the expression outputs. You can quickly create a constant 3 vector node by holding the 3 key and left mouse click in the graph area of the material editor. Fourth is constant 4 vector. The constant 4 vector expression outputs a 4 channel vector value, in other words, 4 constants numbers. An RGBA color can be thought of as a constant 4 vector, where each channel is assigned to a color, red, green, blue, alpha. R specifies the float value of the red, first, channel of the vector the expression outputs. G specifies the float value of the green, second, channel of the vector the expression outputs. B specifies the float value of the blue, third, channel of the vector the expression outputs. A specifies the float value of the alpha, fourth, channel of the vector the expression outputs. You can quickly create a constant 4 vector node by holding the 4 key and left mouse click in the graph area of the material editor. Next is distance cull fade. The distance cull fade expression outputs a scalar value that fades from black to white and can be used to fade an object in once it comes within the cull distance. It should be noted that it does not fade the object out. This network will cause the object to fade in, instead of popping, once the camera comes within the cull distance. Next is time. The time node is used to add the passage of time to a material such as a panner, cosine, or other time-dependent operation. Ignore pause if true. Time will continue to march on even if the game is paused. Period if true. This will be the amount at which to wrap around time. On mobile materials, this will perform the period computation on the CPU at full precision, whereas on the GPU it will run at half precision, potentially having issues on periods longer than a minute. The network described in the image above would create a material that would change over time, constantly exhibiting a sinusoidal transition between white and black. If you enable period, setting period to zero will effectively stop the transition and one will be as if period was false. Setting the number closer to zero will make the material change at a more rapid pace. Next is two-sided sign. The two-sided sign expression is useful for flipping the normal on backfaces of two-sided custom lighting materials to match the functionality of Fong. Plus one for front faces, minus one for back faces of a two-sided material. Next is vertex color. The vertex color expression is the access point for the material to the outputs of color modules affecting mesh. 
There are really an infinite number of ways one could use the colors from a vertex color material expression. For this setup, we are going to keep things relatively simple and just multiply the colors into an existing material. This allows us to have the original texture in place, but to tint it with the mesh paint tool. In order to make this paintable, we need to get the vertex color material expression worked into the network. The base material network looks like this. This material has been desaturated a bit, giving us more room to add color using the mesh paint tool. To get our vertex colors worked into the material, we simply need to intercept the base color connection and multiply it by a vertex color expression's RGB value, like so. Next is particle color. The particle color expression ties into the current color of a given particle based on any per particle color data defined within Cascade. This must be plugged into the appropriate channel, emissive color. In this example, you can see where the particle color expression is providing color to the particles as defined within the particle system. Hope from this video, you will start to move into building in more advanced mechanics, in an easy to follow step by step approach, which will allow you to play around and build your own content, to eventually build your own game. Thanks, thanks a lot, see you in the next video.